diferente aparte de la figura? In a previous video, we've discussed the importance of comprehensible input for language acquisition. Comprehensible input helps students become better at understanding language and is also the foundation of oral skills. Your students expect, and their parents expect them, to be able to use the language to communicate, to share information, and to express their own ideas, thoughts, and feelings so that others can understand them. The National Standards for Foreign Language Education were developed as a collaborative project of nine professional associations. Goal one of the standards is communication, and it describes communication in three modes, interpretive, presentational, and interpersonal. In the interpretive mode, a listener or reader is making meaning from what another person is saying or has written. Communication in the interpretive mode is always one way in the sense that the listener is not directly interacting with a speaker or writer. The presentational mode is also one-way communication. It occurs when a person expresses his or her thoughts and takes place when we speak or write ideas to another person or group of people without direct interaction with the listeners or readers. In these situations, there are no opportunities for the reader or listener to say, could you repeat that? Or, I didn't understand what you meant by that. Or, I would like to add my own thoughts to that. In contrast, the interpersonal mode involves making meaning through active interaction with another person, usually through what is called negotiated interaction. That means that there's a give and take as you work to make yourself understood, to understand what others say to you, and to respond appropriately. This negotiated interaction is not present in the presentational or interpretive modes. Negotiated interaction is how interpersonal communication differs from interpretive and presentational communication. Interpretive and presentational communication are important skills to have. Your students need to understand what they hear or read and be able to write and speak to an audience, such as the teacher and other students. However, it is through the interpersonal mode that most real life and day-to-day -day communication take place. And that is why this video will focus on interpersonal communication. Every year, immersion students should improve in their interpersonal communication skills. That means you need to know how well your students already speak the language and intentionally plan how you will help them improve. The American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages, or ACTFL, has developed guidelines that describe five levels of speaking proficiency, novice, intermediate, advanced, superior, and distinguished. Since the vast majority of your students will be novice or intermediate speakers, we will focus on those two levels of proficiency. Both of these levels have further sublevels designated as low, mid, and high. You can better plan for ways in which you can help your students achieve language growth when you are familiar with the proficiency levels and understand the descriptors for each level. To get you started, we will provide a brief overview of the novice and intermediate levels taken directly from the ACTFL proficiency guidelines. The novice level is characterized by the ability to communicate minimally with learned material. At the novice low level, your students will be able to say isolated words and perhaps a few high-frequency phrases. They will not be able to communicate effectively. At the novice mid-level, your students will still be speaking using isolated words and learned phrases within very predictable areas of need. They will rarely say more than two or three words, with frequent long pauses, and it may be difficult to understand them. If your students are at the novice high level, they'll be able to participate in basic exchanges, such as asking questions or making statements, by relying on the words and phrases that they have learned, you will notice many errors when they speak and still may have difficulty understanding them. 
At the intermediate level, your students will generally be able to combine and recombine words and phrases that they have learned, and they'll be able to ask and answer questions. If your students are at the intermediate low level, they'll be able to handle some basic situations, such as ordering a meal, asking directions, and making purchases, although people may often misunderstand what they are saying. At the intermediate mid-level, your students should be able to handle a variety of uncomplicated, basic communication tasks. They will still take long pauses since they are struggling with finding the appropriate words and phrases. You should be able to understand what they are saying. When your students are at the intermediate high level, they should be able to initiate, sustain, and close conversations on a number of topics, but they will still make some mistakes. Since their vocabulary is still limited, they may hesitate when speaking. They will generally be understood, even by those who aren't used to speaking with non-native speakers. Determining a person's proficiency level requires an external, validated assessment, such as the assessments developed by ACTFL or the STAMP. These external, standardized assessments are evaluated by certified raters. Since these standardized assessments are not done frequently, you need to have a general sense of your student's proficiency on an ongoing basis. You can use tools such as observational checklists, scoring rubrics, can-do statements, or student self-assessments such as linguafolio. Research shows that to improve oral communication skills, students need to have many opportunities for meaningful interactions. However, research also shows that in most classrooms, teachers do most of the talking, as much as 70% of the time or more. That doesn't leave much time for students to speak, and speaking is essential for students to increase their speaking skills. Your students will have limited chances to speak if they are only interacting with you. Immersion students need to talk with each other, not just with you. And when your students are talking to each other, you need to make sure that they are using the immersion language, not English. By the midpoint of first grade, if not before, you'll need to insist that students use only the target language whenever they are in the immersion classroom. As you do with all classroom behaviors, you must set and consistently reinforce clear expectations that only the target language will be spoken. Listening to students as they interact with you and with each other will allow you to continually evaluate their proficiency as well as their understanding of the content. As they work to find the right words or the proper way of putting language together, you will be better able to determine where they need additional help. Having your students speak with their classmates has another benefit. As an immersion teacher, you've become skilled at interpreting and understanding students who are learning a new language. You can anticipate what your students are trying to say, and you're able to fill in the blanks. But when students speak with each other, they're not as forgiving, and they will ask each other for clarification. As you can see, speaking to peers not only gives students more practice to build fluency, it also gives them feedback about how understandable they are. When students realize that they haven't been understood by their peers, they are more likely to think about not only what they want to say, but also how they should say it. There is another advantage to having students speak. The more students realize that they can make meaning through their new language, the more motivated they may be to try to use the language whenever they have something to say, not just when told to answer a question 
or speak to a partner. As all teachers know, motivation is a significant factor in all types of student learning. Processing content in a new language is complex, difficult work. Immersion students are expected to learn academically rigorous concepts while using a new language. Often, it takes time for your students to think about what they want to say and how to say it. You need to be patient. Wait time is important to let your students do the difficult work of processing and communicating their ideas. While it may be faster and easier to provide the words for your students, it's important to let them do the work. If you've ever seen a building under construction, you'll have noticed that there are scaffolds outside the building that allow workers to reach the higher floors. Like these physical scaffolds, classroom scaffolds provide students with the support they need to express themselves in more complex, or mature ways. For immersion students, the supports you provide scaffold your students to produce more language and to communicate more successfully. Some simple and effective language production scaffolds combine visuals with language. You can use the physical environment of your classroom to introduce, reinforce, and extend language and content for your students. Word walls can provide key vocabulary for a particular lesson, such as American history or science, and can be a valuable resource for students throughout the activity. In non-immersion classrooms, word walls are usually words arranged alphabetically. In immersion classrooms, word walls are more helpful when arranged thematically with labeled pictures. This combines the language with visuals, that is, language plus visuals. El cuadro para que mires el vocabulario, ¿sí? Las propiedades como son el tamaño, el peso, la forma, la textura, ¿sí? You might ask students to classify objects on the word wall by identifying similarities and differences. You can also create a number of activities in which you actively use the word wall to help scaffold language. This teacher is modeling how to use the word wall as a resource for a pair activity in which students describe the characteristics of polygons. ¿Cuántos ángulos tiene? Tiene tres ángulos agudos. ¿Cuántos lados tiene? Picture charts are another type of language plus visual scaffold. Picture charts provide students with prompts for naming parts of objects, for understanding the relationships among objects and for understanding processes. Picture charts go beyond word walls since they are diagrams illustrating the connections between parts and holes or among the different functions of objects. For example, you could show a diagram of the human body labeled with the organs related to the digestive system. Books can often be a useful scaffold because they have both visuals and language. Students can find the language that they need in books to support their oral answer. Graphic organizers are often used to organize ideas for writing, but they can also be used to prepare your students to speak. Graphic organizers can take a number of forms, depending on the nature of the language and content that you want your students to learn. Wow, 我们看看这里。地球和木星，它们有什么相同的呢？那是那是木星，一个是变化，和一样的是，它们是，嗯，是星星，是，地球比火星近，是，好，这个是对。
You can use graphic organizers to compare and contrast, or to classify objects and ideas, or to connect cause and effect. In using all of these visual plus language supports, the important thing to remember is that producing language is not about memorizing vocabulary. It's about using extended language, such as phrases and sentences, to communicate about the relationships and processes embedded in the content. But not all language production scaffolds involve the use of visuals. One example is sentence frames. Sentence frames help novice learners speak in more than single words by showing them how to use the words they know in a short sentence. This first grade teacher is using sentence frames so students can talk about parts of the plants using full sentences. By using sentence frames with more and more complex subject matter, you will expand your students' proficiency by helping them express their thinking in more and more mature ways. Entonces, Sara puede contestarme usando cualquiera de estas opciones. Si yo sé que está al es algo fácil para contestar, Voy a tratar de usar otras palabras y practicarlas. ¿Cómo? Señor no matter what subject you are teaching, you should always challenge your students to use increasingly sophisticated language to express their ideas. Entonces, contéstale usando una de esas frases. Boulder está, um, no. Boulder queda, um, uh, no. oeste de Denver. Perfecto. Y me gusta cómo Stacy se corrigió. Y aunque ella siempre usa está al, ahora dijo queda al norte, noroeste de Denver. Víctor. Another effective language scaffold is to use writing to help your students organize their thoughts before speaking. A escribir su información sobre su parte del gobierno. Okay? For example, you can ask students to work alone or with a partner to brainstorm all the words they might need to answer a question or to talk about a topic. In my opinion, I think it's a good and a bad thing, because if everyone says, as I said before, if everyone pays the same, and in a family, I don't have much money and all that, but if everyone follows the rules, I think it's going to be very good, because everyone is doing the same, and you can continue doing that. As an immersion teacher, you've probably had students who want to use English words because they don't know or can't remember a word important to the ideas they want to talk about. When your students need help, provide it in a way that encourages them to draw upon the language that they already know. When students get stuck, there are some strategies you can use to support them. You can prompt students to use body language to supply a missing word or expression. Oui. Eh, si, avec le, um, de et le soleil, oui. la graine va crack. Très bien. Et le crack, qu'est-ce qu'elle fait? Elle est un Il petit. Pousse. Très bien. Elle pousse. pousse. Après le pousse. Prompt your students to use the resources in the classroom to find the language that they need. Non, je ne vais pas donner l'autre. Vous devez trouver. Je vais vous montrer un dessin. Tu penses que tu peux trouver? Remind the students of what they've already learned that can help them express themselves. Vous connaissez ça, on a déjà parlé de ça. Je disais que le chien, s'il n'a il n'a pas de plumes, il a des Support your students' language production through careful oral prompts that enable students to recall a word that they may have forgotten. Comment est-ce que tu Poids. Très bien. Il a trouvé. C'est quoi Poids. Des poils. <laughs> Another helpful scaffold is teaching students circumlocution. Circumlocution is using the language they know to talk around the words they don't know. We want to talk. We want to talk. 
给他们，因为我是很 generous。你可以说，我想做好人，做好事，可不可以？就好，就用另外一些呃简单的词说，好不好？可登，好，好。然后你现在可不可以再告诉我一遍，你为什么要将那些钱给其他人呢？因为我是很慷慨。你用中文说一说，这个是什么意思？慷慨是。大家想一想。Yeah. The purpose of using all these scaffolds. Is for students to become more and more independent communicators. As you use these language scaffolds, structure your lesson to gradually release your students to work on their own. This is called the gradual release model, or I do, we do, you do. J'ai ici un mot qui dit mou, d'accord? J'ai ensuite un autre mot de vocabulaire qui dit. In the I do phase, you provide support by first modeling a task for students. After students have observed the task modeled, which of course will include the language students will need, engage students in doing the task along with you, which is the we do phase. Je vais te dire qu'est-ce que j'ai dans les mains, et ensuite je vais utiliser la phrase et je vais la classer dans le graphique. D'accord? Alors, c'est un solide et il est mou. D'accord? Maintenant, à toi. C'est un solide et il est mou. Il est mou. D'accord. Tu veux le classer dans le graphique? The we do phase may include the entire class working with you, the teacher. In immersion classrooms, you'll want to repeat the we do portion of instruction a number of times to make sure your students have had sufficient opportunities to practice the language and content before letting them work independently. In the you do phase, you'll gradually release the students to work in groups, pairs, and eventually individually using the language that you have modeled. The purpose of using scaffolds, as well as the gradual release model, is to enable students to learn content as well as improve their language proficiency. Ultimately, students should be able to use their language skills in an authentic context beyond the classroom. Ideally, students will use their language with the use of technology such as Skype, field trips to cultural centers, and even student exchanges. However, these opportunities are limited in comparison to those that can be part of your everyday classroom activities. It's important to create the context for interaction in your classroom through whole group, pair share, and small group work. When you are delivering instruction to the whole class, actively and continuously involve students in questions or discussion. So, when you ask questions, have your students tell a partner the answer to your question before you call on anyone. This simple technique increases the opportunity for all students to speak. Even in a whole group setting. Beginning immersion students may only be able to answer questions with limited language. As your youngest learners are just beginning to acquire words, a reasonable expectation is that they respond using single words. Un canguro. You can have them respond. To simple yes/no or either-or questions. Vivirá en Australia? No. En Asia? No. En América del Norte? No. En África? Sí. No. Vive en África, el mono. Y mira. As students become more proficient, expect longer and more complex language from them. For example, in math. Students should be able to explain how they got their answers. Beyond the novice level, 
It's very important that you pose questions that can't be answered by a single word or phrase. Hay una placa tectónica, um, se llama placa tectónica de las Filipinas, y ese se mueve muy, 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 muy rápido. Since your students now have more advanced language skills, ask more probing and follow-up questions. Voy a English, um, voy, voy a que me, me yo chenye lang. Ni wai shemu yo gei ta ma? Yin wei ta men me yo hen duo chen. Yin wei ta men me yo jia. Yin wei ta men me yo jia. Remember, as students engage in whole class discussion, the goal is to have students speak in more mature ways using sentences and even paragraphs. When students respond, it's not always necessary for you to comment on every response. You can simply encourage and prompt other students' contributions to the discussion. Your role is to encourage a controlled but free-flowing conversation among your students. Remember, the less you talk, the more your students do. Unless your students have opportunities to use the language, they won't be able to say much, even after several years in immersion. That means discussions among students, and not just with the teacher, have to be carefully structured using the scaffolding techniques we've talked about. Of course, the best way to make sure that there are many opportunities for students to use their new language in meaningful and purposeful ways is to plan for lots of peer and group work. Working with peers dramatically increases the amount of practice your students have speaking the language. When you are speaking one-on-one -on -one with your students, only one student gets the benefit of speaking. During peer and group work, all of the students are benefiting. When you're preparing students to do group work, it's critical that you carefully plan and organize the activity to build in the scaffolding techniques and to set clear expectations for the process and the outcome. Group work is most effective when it is carefully structured so that students know what to do, how they'll be accountable for their learning, and how they are expected to be contributing members to the group's work. That means that each student in the group needs to know what role he or she is playing within the group and to understand what the group is expected to achieve. Be sure that students know that all students are expected to speak and contribute to the final outcome or product. For example, you might assign roles such as facilitator, recorder, or reporter. Here, the group reporter tells what her group learned. Dans la poche de la maman, ou bien c'est lui qui a la poche? Le maman a une poche Très bien. pour le petit kangaroo pouvoir dans. Très bien. With appropriate scaffolding tools, your students will be able to focus on the content that you want them to learn and have opportunities to use their language skills to probe deeper into their discussions in meaningful ways. It's important that every student be engaged in the learning process so that everyone in that group can explain a concept or key idea in the lesson. That means all students must be learning and participating, not just a handful that are the most skilled learners. One strategy is to explain that when the group activity is complete, you will randomly pick a student out of the group to report. This provides an incentive for all students in the group to understand and be able to explain what the group has learned. When students divide into small groups, it's very easy for them to go back to speaking their primary language. One technique to discourage that is to provide incentives or rewards for staying in the target language. These incentives don't have to be tangible rewards, it can be recognition. Your students, especially the younger ones, will do an awful lot just for the recognition of teacher praise. Diane, agarra un punto. Whether you're working in a whole group, small group, or pair share setting, you'll need to provide your students with as many opportunities as possible to let them practice speaking the target language. 
give students ah, opportunities so, to express uh, their ideas in real and meaningful ways. Oh, By using the language production scaffolds that we've talked about and integrating them into the gradual release model, or I do, we do, you do, you will advance your students' language proficiency. Yeah.